All right, hello everyone. We're back. I am going to do a super quick video here on UV mapping in Moto just because this course should include it. There's tons of other stuff out there on UVs in Moto. Um, the other thing I really quickly want to mention, two things, is one, the I'm in Mo Moto 12 now. The tools have been updated since then um, to some significance. They're definitely better. I do prefer still Maya's UV tools, and that is typically what I use. Just their packing algorithm is still much better, although Moto's UV tools are very good. Uh, but let's just go ahead and jam this out real quick. So I have a very simple model that I'm going to unwrap here, and this stuff would be arrayed around, but I would unwrap it first and then duplicate it around so we can do that momentarily. So first thing is let's get out of my custom tab here, and let's go into the standard UV tool tab. Okay. Chances are you'll come in here and you won't see anything in the UV window. That's because you don't have a map selected. Now you can do that over here in your list tab, a new UV maps. You can do it under the new dropdown that they have here in the UV editor window, any UV editor window, by the way, no matter which uh, layout you're in, or up here at the top, there's a dropdown. You can make a new one, you can select none, or you can select your UV map. All right, let's just dive right into this real quick. I'm gonna move some stuff out of the way so we can just work on some things at a time. Uh, double click everything here. Shift H to hide everything else. And then I went ahead and started by getting a edge selection queued up, just so you don't have to watch me make that tedious selection there. Okay, let's just try to use, you could, there's a number of ways you can do things in Moto. Use, you can, uh, you know, use your projections and pro project straight uh, planar projection from an axis. Um, that has its place sometimes never have used project from view. Some people like the peeler. I don't use it much. Rectangle is extremely useful. There's a lot of good tools here and there's orientation and UV alignment tools here as well. But the, the biggest one is the unwrap tool. So for that, we need an edge selection, which I've made, and we're just going to click unwrap. All right. Uh, it's done a pretty poor job uh, right out the hole. Also, I should mention the first time you run the tool, it's going to have like one iteration or something. Um, which does nothing. You definitely want to crank it up over 200 somewhere. Personally, I like it up at 1,000. And uh, the gaps has to do with how much space in between your shells it attempts to put. And you can toy around with, you know, the axes that it's projecting from. Um, also, bear in mind, it's when I use this unwrap tool that it is unwrapping all selected polygons, which in this case is all visible polygons. Okay. So just keep that in mind and you can change your method here. It's not doing a lot for us this time. Let's try to relax the shell and see what happens. And if, if so, we may need to make another cut, which most likely we will, but let's, let's cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay. So uh, select the, the polygons in question, cause that's what we want the tool to affect. And let's try the relax tool. Um, and you can change your methods here too. adaptive. A lot of times gets you something very nice. You definitely want another thousand iterations. Um, in this case, it doesn't really know what to do with this shell. I, I probably need to cut cut this thing off here. Um, it seems to be confused. Unfortunately, I can't double click this edge loop because if I do, Moto will get confused and put a bunch of junk edges in. And if I undo, you don't really get it back. You don't get back to the selection that you had. So I have to just single click these edges, unfortunately because otherwise I'd have a bunch of junk edges that it selects running everywhere and I would have to go clean that selection up and it would take longer than what I'm doing now. So let's cut this off and see what happens. We run the un unwrap tool again. All right, much better, much flatter result. It's still not round, uh, which again, just goes back to the fact that their unwrapping algorithm isn't as advanced as some others. Uh, Maya would probably know that this, is, this shell is a perfect circle and it would flatten it out better than this. This isn't that bad. Let's try again to relax it. So we'll grab just this shell and we will relax. Whoops. I think I have it set to auto activate. Yeah. You can try adaptive. I yeah, nudged it in a little bit. It's hard to say. Let's hide all other polys because I want to see, actually, we don't need to do that. I want to see what my stretching actually looks like here. So I have, if this isn't on for you, show distortion will give you an idea of what your, what your textile density looks like. It's also here under options in the UV window. 
the green is what you want to see. Uh, blue means it's a little stretched. Red means it's a little squashed. This is pretty darn green here, even though it's not round and we know it should be. This is still a pretty flat shell and it's oriented nicely, so I'm going to leave that. So let's just scale it down a little bit. We'll deal with textile density later and I'm just going to move it off to the side and we'll work on another piece. All right, so in our 3D view, let's go back to our edge selection. Well, actually, let's let's also deal with let's also deal with this guy. So I'm gonna which shell is that? It's this one. So now let's hide all others because I don't want to mess up that shell that we that we like. And I'll put a seam in it right here. We'll unwrap. And bam, I mean, that is perfectly rectangle. So, I mean, like I say, there's some things that Moto really does, the UV tools really do get right. Now let's select an edge in this view and use one of our orientation uh, aligned to the horizontal axis. There we go, one of these, there it is. They also have really nice shell snapping features that'll snap it to different quadrants of the grid. So you can, you know, select your shells and, uh, you know, have it like snap um, I have used these. I have used them. I just don't remember exactly how off the top of my head. Maybe you have to, uh, yeah, I don't quite remember, but I have used them either way. This is perfectly rectangular. Um, if it wasn't, it's so like, let's say, I wonder if this will work as an example. Let's say it was like this could run your rectangle tool on it and it'll straighten it out. Okay, so rectangle is for things that you know, well, in fact, it's not perfectly, there's a hitch in it right there. So let's run our rectangle on it. You can tell it to pack it. Um, you could tell it uniform spans too, which is handy. Let's turn on uniform X and Y spans and we're good to go. Um, really would only be X spans, I think, but yeah, since it's, there's only two edges on the top and bottom. So now it's packed it. it I told it to give it a 20% gap. So uh, their packing tools are built into other tools as well. So anyway, that shell's ready to go. Perfectly rectangular. Let's unhide them all. Let's see if we can actually, let's look at these guys. I think they're actually pretty flat as they're going to get, but let's just try to run a relax on them. I think that's an adaptive relax, which is why that took so long. Yeah, we're not going to get anything more from this. If I scale up, you can see that they're fairly green and there's just a little bit of junk on the sides, but uh, those are flat as they should be. We're going to do the same thing with these ones. We're going to grab a couple edges. Whoops, not those, not that. And we're going to align them to an axis. And again, we're not going to worry about we're not going to worry about textile density just yet. These, these ones are tricky because technically like if we're going to have a texture with some, some kind of like brushed metal or something, they would need to be oriented the same way that they are to the model. See, so that the brushing can go across it. Um, I will just mention that if, if, if it's not going to have that, then you don't need to worry about it. And it will always be better to have them be straight to one axis for the sake of baking your normal maps. The straighter your, especially your shell edges, but any interior angles are, the cleaner your bake's gonna be. And you can use these alignment tools here if you, if you hold Alt. So what's nice is I can select, uh, the way it should work is I can select multiple edge loops like this, and I can just hit the button and it'll put everything to the furthest left selection, but if I hold Alt, it should do them. Um, the idea is that it will do them uh, in in rows, but uh, it's having a hard time figuring that out right now. So we'll just say forget about it. But you see how it's straightening out uh, that that edge row there. All right, let's just move these off to the side. I'll probably hold Control, rotate them up, up and down. Let's go to the next piece. Let's just do this tube real quick. I'm just going to hide everything else. We'll put a seam along the, down the back side of it. 
think this is uh, sometimes where people use the peeler. Um, I haven't, whoops, let's leave the tool on. Angle based gets us a better result on this guy. Um, I haven't really used the peeler. Uh, I think I poked my head in there once and it didn't do anything for me. So I decided, nah, I don't need it. I have other methods of doing things. And also we can rectangle this guy. And we will not have uniform spans because they're not uniform on the model. And boop, that'll rectangle that guy out for us. Shrink it down a little bit. It's a little bit big. Move it off over here. One hide everything. It's just kind of systematically hide everything we've, uh, whoops. Oh, we'll hide everything that we've got done and we'll just move through it like that. It'll be much easier. All right, I'll put a seam on the back of this guy too. This one's going to be a little trickier just because of the nature of uh, what's going on here. Yeah, in fact, this one, let's see if we can get to the selection a little bit faster. I'm going to grow, shift up arrow. And deselect these polys. So we have a cap. Put a boundary edge on it. And double click, control double click that. And then let's go down the back bottom edge here to split the shell, to split the cylinder. And we're going to have to cut these nubs off somehow, but I bet I, I wonder, I really might be able to get away with this. Let's try it. We'll have them flapping in the wind here. Let's see if we can finagle this to work. We're going to cut. These are where I want all my seams. I'm sure I missed something. Let's just take a look. Let's run the UV tool. Okay, unwrap. Not too shabby, not too shabby at all, as a matter of fact. So see, I have my main cylindrical shell here. Let's straighten that out so we can see what we're doing. In fact, this is all this junk out of the way. Um, left bracket to invert selection. I'll move that just out of the way. All right, this all looks pretty good. That's pretty flat. We're going to try to relax it anyway. I found it's always good to try. See, it helps a little bit. It's kind of helping a bit conformal. Let's try the adaptive method. Okay, that's even a little better. So, seems good to me. I'm not sure, and I haven't tried this, so we're going to find this one out together. But let's see if we can square these ones off without having to do it manually. Let me just try it on one of them. Let's try rectangle. Ah, yeah, good. Not going to work. That's all right. <clears throat> so these are an example of where you have wavy stuff. You don't want to be wavy, okay? So for that reason, we're going to go ahead and straighten this stuff out. I wonder if this time it will work. Try the down method. No, is it alt? No. It's supposed to do it. It's supposed to do it on a per row basis, but that's not working. So I'll have to go back and watch that video again and find out why, because I don't remember uh, it's supposed to do it when you have spans. Maybe they just have to be even spans on the same mesh for it to say, oh, you want them all, you want them all aligned this way, but to them relative to themselves, not to the furthest vertex entirely. All right, we're gonna go up. My bad, <laughs> we're gonna go down. We're gonna go up. I should be able to just hit G. G key is my hotkey for repeat last command. Okay, down, down. And now we're going to go left. So it's going to get a little faster from here. I wonder if they had a middle version. 
Alright. Left. Left. G. Just repeating. That's all I'm doing. And then now we're going to go right. And this stuff will matter in your normal map bakes. So you're, you're thinking that it's a little tedious. And it is. Um, I personally love doing UVs, particularly with the Maya tools, like I've said. Um, it, it is tedious, but I like it. So <laughs> it's kind of, I know a lot of people use this word and throw it around a lot, but it's kind of zen-like, and it's kind of like a puzzle. So now this shell is straight in the, it's directly vertical and directly horizontal. And when you think about square pixels and diagonal angles running across square pickle, pixels, that's why you'll get a stair-stepping in your normal map. When you have a perfectly straight edge, you're going to get a, per, a very clean bake in your normal map. And that's the same reason we're going to straighten this guy out too. Let's see if the rectangle tool works on this. I would argue that even though the, the, the rectangle tool works incredibly in here, the, the Maya one would straighten this out even though it has these jaggies on top. In fact, we could even, if you wanted to, we could probably cut these off. We could try cutting rectangle and then pasting them back. Oh, nope, didn't like that. I thought I was being clever, but not so. Let's just go into ver vertex mode and straighten this guy out too. In fact, we can just double click this edge now. Oh, not that one. Dang it, every time you think you're going to get a shortcut going thwarting me here just on those inner edges all right let's start going to the right and again all this will be worth it when you get a squeaky clean normal map g key g key and now let's go Let's go down. Let's start going down with these. We can do it edge. Edge G. Now we'll go up. G. And lastly, this last row here will go down. All right, this shell, whoops, one more. We're gonna go up. That shell is very nice and squared off. These are nice and square. We'll just, let's just shrink them down a little because they're obnoxiously big. Move them off over here. All right. So this piece is done. Let's go over here. And we'll just cut this top cap off. We'll leave this. We'll see if we can get away with this. And we'll cut a seam down here. For this one, I'm going to try to just cut a seam around the ring here. And put a seam down the back. See how when I double clicked, it just went rogue and they, they, I really wish they'd fix that. It's been a long time in Moda since that, that has been a thing and it should not be a thing. Makes it difficult to double click and get contiguous edge selections. All right, let's run unwrap. And we'll worry about these little bits here in a minute. This looks pretty good. This straightened out very nicely. Really happy about that. Let's just spin it around the way that it's oriented in the viewport, up and down. Although it flattened this out really nicely, it's not perfectly straight. And again, see that, that jag in that pixel there? That's how you know it's not straight, and that's how you know you're going to get jaggy in your normal map unless you have insane resolution. These are all ways that you can, you know, when people in their portfolio, they're running 4K maps on everything. Yes, but in game, that's not the case. You can't do that. And you need the best looking normal maps possible. Let's try to relax this piece a little bit. It's kind of cockeyed. Let's see if we can do something for it. That did something for it. Let's conformal. No, it's, there's a little bit of a discrepancy in the texel density there. Let's do the adaptive method. So if I scale this down a little bit, you'll see the 
let's try it again. Let's let's look at it now that I can see my colors. Relax. Yeah, the adaptive method gets us a more ideal result towards the middle, particularly. And this light blue, don't worry about that. There's going to be some of that. That's just how it is. Let's go down. See, there's a, a little bit of a discrepancy there. Down, 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 down. Let's go up with this one and see. Yeah, that helps a little bit. All right, that's pretty good. And again, can't help there being diagonals sometimes, but where you can help the straightness, uh, the straightening of a shell, you should. I can manually move these out and kind of help it a little bit. All right, this guy is a perfect candidate for our handy rectangle tool. Even though that is technically the way I cut this shell. Um, let's just rectangle it. Right, what I really need to do is turn that pack off. There you go. <laughs> Silly. All right, and this guy I don't really need to relax that. That's pretty round. That's not going to cause anybody any problems. Let's move this off. What do we got here? Oh, yeah, this guy. Yeah, this one, you know, it's like not really worth it. You know, what I'd do is probably, it's not worth it to cut an extra shell here and put a seam on that. Again, unless you're having some kind of brushed metal or something, some kind of linear texture that has straight details. You know, then you need a straight shell or else you're not going to get it to wrap around that cylindrical shape. But I would just probably just like try to leave this, this detail so small. And if I could get away from uh, adding more UV shells, then that would be my, my go-to solution rather than, you know, if I could avoid even putting, see, there we go. That's what you want it to look like. If I could avoid putting a brushed metal texture, or some kind of linear texture on it, just to avoid having an additional seam and shell, then I would. All right, let's. We're gonna. I, what I should have done here, and I could do, but I think I individually manipulated these a little bit so they wouldn't line up with the high poly. It, in fact, you know what? No, we're not gonna worry about the high poly in this course. We'll do that in the next one. So I am gonna just unwrap one, and then we'll array it back around once it's unwrapped and then we'll pack it. So on this guy, this one, you will have to break the shell off here. Put a seam on that. Unfortunately, these have to come off as well. Let's see now, what, watch what happens when I double click. See, so let's just get the, the silly trickier selections first so I can use my double click. Well, if, if we were gonna do that, we'd have to do this. This, 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 and this. Okay, now I have my double clicks out of the way because once you start adding non-contiguous edge loops to your selection and then you go to double click another thing, that's when it freaks out. All right, let's see what this does. Unwrap tool, it's control A to find it. Or I'm sorry, shift A. It looks pretty good actually. Um, it's big and that's why you're getting the blue. It's really big. It's saying, oh, whoa, whoa, your textile density in world space is like much smaller than that. So I want to see my colors. So I'm going to scale it down a little bit. And then, oops, which one is it? There it is. Use my rectangle. Straighten that guy out. And then these guys, that actually, I know there's a lot of colors on it, but they look pretty good. I'm going to relax them though. There we go. That tightened that up a lot better. You can see you're getting a lot more of the green tone there. Um, it's, it's really more up and down. So there's that. And then these are facing this direction in the 3D viewport. And I'm holding control to angle snap my rotate tool. So I'm getting, you know, even increments. These ones, it's so small, it, it's even more helpful when it's small pieces, so I probably will straighten these ones out. Um, 
just for the sake of consistency. Just bring those in and we'll we'll fix this in a minute. So let's move them manually out. And all I'm looking for are these polygons right now. I'm looking for that green color. There, something like that. More green, less red and blue. Particularly less red, but all right. Now let's slam these guys down. And I should mention that though the tools are different, my my UV process in Maya is similar in the what we're doing right now. So, and I could I gladly do a series. I again I love UV mapping. I'm extremely efficient at it, particularly in Maya. Well, for sure in Maya over this. This is going pretty slowly. I apologize for that, but I'm more than happy to do a series on that at another time. There's a lot of good tools in there, but my process is similar. Okay, I just kind of unwrap and then move stuff off to the side, and then we'll hit U to unhide everything. Everything has nice flat shells, and also I've achieved the rotation, the orientation of things that I want. That's key to uh, the process I'm doing here. Um, I don't want, when I run my packing tools, it to pack things, you know, mess up and put everything all diagonal again. I want, you want to pack your UVs with the purpose. You want them to be oriented, the shells oriented in the way that you intend your textures to lay across them. So if I have one kind of metal that's, or, or it's wood or something that has a grain in it, that's going one direction on a shell and I want to use that same texture on another shell, it needs to be, they need to be going the same direction. Um, or else you're just going to be fighting yourself during the text texturing process. Um, so now I did threaten, I was going to array this back around. So shift H. Now to do this, we're going to have to use a work plane. So I'm going to grab this vertex because that's where I want the origin to be. And then I'm going to give it some vertex reference so it can create when I hit shift home, a work plane and it's not showing it. So now I have, see this light colored construction grid? It's changed my, look at my world axes. And we, I did a video on the work plane, so I guess I don't have to say more about that. But, uh, so now that I have my work plane selection, I can run my radial array tool, which is in the modeling tools. So I'm not gonna go back to the modeling tab and show you where the button is. I'm just gonna use my control shift V hotkey. And I'm gonna hit X to turn on snapping and it should be vertex snapping and I'm going to move, I'm going to snap my center of the tool to that center vertex there. And I think there was like five. So there we go. So now I can hit end and that kills the work plane. And now I have these guys and they're all stacked and you could leave them that way if you want. So if you didn't want, in fact, in, in this case, I'll show it, but if you didn't want, if you wanted these shells to all be stacked, what you do is you'd pack all your UVs first and then do the array afterwards uh, when you're like, okay, my UVs are done. And then these shells would remain perfectly stacked um, and you could just texture them that way. But for the sake of ambient occlusion and other things, sometimes you don't want shells stacked, um, although it can be very handy to leave them stacked oftentimes. So let's do, let's just say that I'm not going to array these tubes around. I just showed you that method and you would use like this center vert here as your, uh, look your origin for the tool to array that back around to make it three, like I had on the high poly of this thing. So let's just say that this is good and let's pack these things. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to grab it all. You can grab it all or you can grab none of it. Either way, it's the same. And let's use their packing tool. They have orient pieces that would, kind of give you a general, but I like the precision of telling it using these edge align tools here and saying, no, orient it to this edge specifically, but they do have orient tools that will do like a uh, default general. It'll look at the, the bounding box of the shell kind of, and the shape of the shell and give you an orientation. Now I could use the textile density tool here. They have some nice tools for that. Like I could say, let me just show that to you. I could say, okay, get the, te uh, get the textile density of sample it of this piece and now these pieces which are these guys because they're not even and the textile density is not the same as this but it should be because it'll have the same texture on it say apply apply to that 
And so now you saw it, these will have the same textile density. But their pack tool will do that as well. So let's just grab everything. This is handy when you're making uh, tweaks after you've packed. And there's a number of ways that that's handy. But that's a new addition as well. So I wanted to show that. There's normalize, meaning it'll take that shell and fill it to the zero to one space based on, um, well, you can apply it to individual shells or you can apply it to all shells. And so what that did was it took and made the textile density relative to all shells and applied it across them all. So that's useful. That's basically what the pack tool is going to do here for me, because I'm going to tell it to not to orient, but stretch. And that what that's going to do is it's going to normalize our shells um, to each other. See so gaps by pixel, actually like an eight pixel gap, 10, 10 pixels is okay, actually. Don't orient, but we do want it to stretch because that's going to scale our shells and give us the textile density, uh, even that out for us. All right, so you saw what it did. Um, now our textile density, based on the colors, you can tell is relatively even. So if I get, if I use my textile density tool now, and I say sample textile density, you'll see uh, what what density it has here. If I apply it now. To this you'll see it barely moves that's because the packing tool pretty much already did this to all the shells for us you can see that this pack is much less than ideal um really not great at all chances are you're going to want something like these guys to be much bigger but either way you got your you got it all normalized and now you can go through and go through the process of hand packing this thing however you like um, and finishing up that way. Again, the Maya packing tools will get you much further. You can, uh, you'll still have to do some hand packing always, but they're going to get you much further than what we have here. You know, these ones I would probably want down here. These guys, these little, these little doodads right here, I would for sure want much bigger because that's nothing about this is going to hold up in the normal map or show any kind of detail whatsoever. So even though the textile density is even, it's not going to be what you want it to be here. So probably grab all these and scale them up way up. Unfortunately, they're not near each other at all. Don't click move them off to where I can get them much closer to each other so I can really actually scale them. Yeah, like I said, this process, it is similar in Maya, but their, their packer will get you much, much, much further, much further. And uh, something like this asset is already kind of strange. That's why it's was struggling to pack it because you have something like this long strip that goes from one side of the UV zero to one space to the other, um, which is why I really couldn't scale this shell up. What I'd have to do, to be honest, let's try it. Let's try this actually. Let's break this shell into two. So let me put a cut in it. Um, let's split it there. So you just saw, I just, darn it. All I did there was I, I selected an edge and I, uh, did split. There's a split and sew tool as well, but I just put a manual split in it right there. So now let's see if we can run the pack and it'll just do a little bit better of a job here. Yeah, see, that's much better. That shell was too long, so it was blocking everything. Now, that being said, I would still go in and scale these little guys up. See how this big hole in the middle of this shell, it didn't pack anything in there. This is wasted space. You can very easily, if you leave a couple pixels, you know, eight, 10 pixels, eight is more than enough in here. Uh, you can pack all kinds of stuff in here and then that gives you more room to scale up other shells. So uh, this is something Maya's packer will do, put things in holes um, if it needs to, to optimize the space. So I would definitely take advantage of that. Like again, I would I'd grab these guys and you know we can even do this we could even pack these whoops 
Let's shift hide all the rest. And now let me move it over here. And let's try to pack these and see what happens. There we go. So that gives us a little something easier to work with. So the, I guess the moral of the story is that your packing tools aren't going to stop you having to uh, do some hand pack work, right? Like you're still going to have to pack stuff. You're still going to have to do this. So you got to learn to love it because that's just part of the job, you know, got to pack UVs. It's just the way it is. You could even do something like that. Personally, I'd move it down and over something like this. You know, these little guys What were these guys. Oh, that piece. Yeah, it's probably fine. And then you can, you know, from here, you can scale these down a lot and start to fit them in, but they're going to be still five times bigger than they were, right? Like they're going to be way bigger than they were. And here's, here's a good example. Let's use some of the tools that we have available to us and try to see what we can get away with. Let's grab this one too. Double click off the mesh to get that. See this space is just all wasted. It's all wasted up here. No reason. No reason to do that. And so I did want this to be quick, but I just like doing UVs guys. You know, I don't know what to tell you. You can stop watching if you want, but I'm about to show some cool stuff. So let's scale these up as much as we can. Actually, let's see if what that's going to do to our texel density. So I want to sample it. Oops, no, I want to sample the whole shell. Sample. Apply. Yeah, we can probably get away with that. This guy is going to have to move. Um, let's put it here. Something like this. All right, now grab these shells and use your texel density tool and say, you know, apply either way. And now these, this whole piece is matching up, right? Like this is all the same now, you know? So the texel density of the thing to itself is the same. That's probably not going to work, but there's plenty of room here. There's plenty of room for this. We could probably even get away with a little bit more, but yeah. So this is kind of like what my UV process is like, even in Maya. Um, although the tools will, like I say, get you a little further. UV tools in Moto are very good. Very, very good though. Still, there's a lot more here than there was even just a few releases ago. Um, they've done a lot. And then just the fact that Moto is just so fun to use, um, makes me want to do my UVs in here more. I would say, um, if the unfold flatten things out just a little better for me and the packer was a little more powerful, really, I, I would probably just do my UVs in here and not really do anything in Maya anymore if I could help it. So you see where I'm going with this. We're just going to keep, we're just going to use all this unused space. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you can't just auto pack stuff. Most of the time you gotta use them as a tool, which is what they are. And then the sweat of your brow will, will do the rest. And there's always room in a UV layout. I find there's always room for something. Still, I, there's tons of space in this thing. I, I typically like my packs to be tighter than this, but again, I'm going to keep it short here. Tons of space. We could scale. We could go in and find another piece that we like and, you know, probably scale it up a bit more. This guy somehow, you know, we could, we could go in and, you know, I'd start doing things like this. Well, this one's part of this one, so that needs to match up. But anyway, you get the gist. So let's go ahead and let's get this in here first.
yeah. So anyway, this is this is where I'll leave it. You guys get the gist. I've showed you kind of everything of of greater importance. You can look into the UV peeler and uh, some of this other stuff on your own time. The symmetrized stuff, I do use that from time to time. It's helpful when you have symmetrical meshes. It can be very helpful. Um, so I would look into that on your own time. But we'll go ahead and leave it here. This is a pretty okay pack, and it's definitely going to get us a nice texture bake. So uh, that's of, of key importance. And this is pretty much going to wrap up the series. I have the the uh, the PDF that I'm including that has all my hotkeys and it has like really good notes that you can just if you're like oh what was that one tool or what was that hotkey for that tool or something really good to refer to or if you just couldn't remember at which video you remembered seeing something in it'll help you there at finding which video that was so you can quickly go watch that part of the video and that's how this course is intended um, in its final version here is to be more of a reference course so with that said thanks a lot for watching I really appreciate it. Again, I'm working on a, a more project-based uh, tutorial series that shows my production workflow using the Round Edge shader, and I'll be making a really cool game asset in that video series. So, you know, look for that in the coming, uh, in the near future, and really appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you then.